Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been quite a while since we posted new nature and wildlife content, but here we go. So today we are diving into the fascinating world of ecosystem engineers, the architects of our natural world. These incredible species play a crucial role in shaping and designing our ecosystems, maintaining a delicate balance between living organisms and their environments. But before we dive deeper into the topic, allow me a quick word. If you are one of the few people following the channel and are now wondering where the outdoors content we've been posting lately has gone, well, I've decided to separate the two things and create a new channel. So we have the nature and wildlife content over here and the quote-unquote real-life outdoors content over on a new channel. If you like that sort of stuff as well, feel free to go over there and subscribe. Starting today, I have posted fresh new content. Like I said, feel free to check it out later. The link will be in the description. But now let's move on to the ecosystem engineers. So an ecosystem engineer is any species that creates, modifies, maintains and maybe even destroys a habitat. Ecosystem engineers significantly influence the structure and function of an ecosystem through their activities and as a result have a large impact on species richness and overall environmental health. In some cases, they seemingly only intervene in a small or neglectable manner, but these organisms are important for maintaining the stability of the environment they are living in. Their alterations can create new habitats, modify existing ones and even impact other species' survival. There are two forms of ecosystem engineers and before we delve into some amazing examples, let's very briefly understand the difference between allogenic and autogenic ecosystem engineers. Allogenic engineers are those that mechanically modify their environment through living or non-living materials. Although sometimes considered as pests, think of termites in this case. They are building intricate mounds while moving large quantities of soil, modifying its texture and content, additionally helping to maintain soil health through nutrient cycling and aerating the ground. On the other hand, autogenic engineers are living organisms that modify their environment directly by modifying themselves. That kind of sounds like fantasy or sci-fi material at first, but just think of trees. As they grow, their trunks, branches and leaves will create new habitats for countless other species and additionally their roots will alter the water flow pattern in the ground. Now let's explore some examples of ecosystem engineers that showcase their remarkable abilities. I guess the first and probably most obvious candidate is the beaver, an allogenic engineer. They can be seen as nature's ultimate architect and builder. By constructing dams across streams and rivers, they divert and stagnate stream flow and therefore create a far more extensive wetland, which is essential for a plethora of wildlife including birds, insects, amphibians, fish, but also aquatic organisms like the tiny zooplankton. In order to build the dam, beavers will remove big bushes and small trees from the surrounding area Area, opening up denser shaded areas and allowing more sunlight in, which ultimately leads to change of environment. These beaver-created wetlands serve as important new ecosystems, enhancing the biodiversity and additionally acting as natural water filters. Maybe less expected than the beaver, but still a huge ecosystem engineer is the elephant. Elephants have not only one, but instead a number of behaviors that change their environment, therefore making them allogenic engineers. Elephants often migrate long distances with their whole herd, most likely using the same pathways each year or season, sometimes probably for decades or even centuries. The migration trails sculpt the land with deep groves, also leaving behind enormous footprints if the ground is soft enough. The footprints will fill with water after rain, creating tiny ponds for frogs and other aquatic creatures, or little pools for smaller animals, including insects, to drink out of. Elephants are also responsible for a lot of sediment moving and distribution. They will dig in search of water or mineral sediments and may remove several cubic meters of sediments in each excavation. Wallowing elephants may remove up to a cubic meter of pond sediment each time they visit water sources. These huge land mammals will also push over trees in order to feed on fruits, upper branches and the leaves. In other or sometimes the same cases, the tree bark will also get removed for feeding purposes. Sometimes elephants will subsequently transform forests or wooded areas into grassland habitats, destroying or hardly altering the habitat for some species, while simultaneously making the landscape welcoming for other animal species to graze and live in.
coral reefs are a classic example for autogenic engineers. These living organisms develop into an intricate and beautiful calcium carbonate structure, providing shelter and a thriving habitat for countless marine species, plants and animals alike. Consequently, coral reefs often provide nurseries as well as feeding and spawning grounds for many fish. With the naturally created barrier in the ocean, coral reefs affect the current, break the waves and play an essential role in protecting coastlines from erosion. Kelp and more notably kelp forests, which most often can be found in rocky cold water areas, play a similar role as the coral reefs. The physical structure with the elongated trunks and the white and long leaves provide not only shelter and spawning ground for smaller species, but also food for fish and other marine organisms. The canopies act not only as a light shield, but will also protect the habitat from strong currents and wave activities. Depending on the size of the kelp forest, they might also alter surrounding water temperature. Prairie dogs are fantastic allogenic engineers. Their extensive burrow systems and dens create underground cities, also known as prairie dog towns, impacting the mostly grassland habitat significantly. Their burrows serve as shelter for themselves and other animals like rabbits, snakes, amphibians and sometimes also birds. Next to providing shelter for others, the prairie dog towns will also provide aeration for the soil as well as redistribution of nutrients and increase of water filtration. Together with their grazing habits, this will maintain a balanced grassland ecosystem and inhibit the growth of woody plants or even worse, the introduction of invasive species. Keeping the ecosystem in the grassland state will additionally attract other grazing species and their predators. A similar ecosystem engineer, maybe in a more subtle and smaller way, is the arctic fox, which also builds dens, mainly to raise its pups. A finished den may be used for centuries after it's completed and during the time it is in active use, it will contain large amounts of nutrients from the fox's decomposing prey, their urine and feces. Ultimately, this will lead to an increased vegetation patch around the dens, creating more biodiversity mainly in plants. That will then attract animals like reindeer and lemmings, which is a small rodent living in arctic regions like the arctic fox. There are plenty more species of ecosystem engineers, for example earthworms, woodpeckers, gopher tortoise, parrotfish and many more, but for now I think we got a nice overview and a few good examples. These organisms create habitats, enhance biodiversity and influence the survival of countless other species. It's essential for us to appreciate and protect the ecosystem engineers to ensure the resilience and health of our planet. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed learning about ecosystem engineers, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Also last reminder for my new other channel with the outdoor stuff, links in the description. But most importantly, have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.